the 25th day of December, unknown ages from the time when God created the heavens and the earth, and then formed man and woman in his own image. Several thousand years after the flood, when God made the rainbow shine forth as a sign of the covenant, 21 centuries from the time of Abraham and Sarah, 13 centuries after Moses led the people of Israel out of Egypt, 1,100 years from the time of Ruth and the judges, 1,000 years from the anointing of David as king. In the 65th week, according to the prophecy of Daniel, in the 194th Olympiad, the 752nd year from the foundation of the city of Rome, the 42nd year of the reign of Octavian Augustus, the whole world being at peace, Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, desiring to sanctify the world by his most merciful coming, being conceived by the Holy Spirit and nine months having passed since his conception, was born in Bethlehem of Judea of the Virgin Mary. Today is the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the flesh.
The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise and thank you, O God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom you have enlightened us by revealing the light that never fades. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day awaken to the brightness of his glory through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
The first reading is taken from the prophet Isaiah, the seventh chapter. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask a sign of the Lord your God, let it be deep as Sheol, or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. The word of the Lord.
The second reading is taken from the prophet Isaiah, the 11th chapter. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist, and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The word of the Lord.
third reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. The word of the Lord.
fourth reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. The word of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from our God and Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The book of Proverbs contains a whole lot of wisdom from Solomon, wisdom he wished to pass on to his son and ultimately to all of God's people. Tucked in the back of the book of Proverbs, however, is a little section that Solomon didn't write but still included in his book. Chapter 30 of the book of Proverbs contains riddles from a fellow named Aguer, kind of like riddles we hear about in the book of The Hobbit, for example, where we meet the three-foot-tall hobbit Bilbo who gets lost in the misty mountains and meets a 
hideous creature named Gollum. Bilbo is lost and Gollum is hungry, and so they have a contest where they go back and forth with riddles. If Bilbo wins, he gets to escape the mountain. If Gollum wins, well, Bilbo just doesn't want to lose. The first riddle is this. What has roots as nobody sees is taller than trees. Up, up it goes, and yet never grows. The answer, of course, is a mountain. We see riddles kind of like this in Proverbs chapter 30. Let me read one of those riddles for you from verse 4. Who has ascended to heaven and come down? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has wrapped up the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name? Surely you know. This riddle would go unanswered for a thousand years. We know the name of God from Scripture, Yahweh, Adonai, Lord, the great I Am, but we never knew the name of the Lord's Son until Christmas over 2,000 years ago. And strangely, reading our passage for tonight from Luke chapter 2, we're left in suspense. What is the name of this Son? The Son of Mary, yet also the very Son of God. This child who is lying in a manger wrapped in swaddling cloths. Note what names are mentioned in Luke chapter 2. Caesar Augustus, Quirinius, Joseph, Mary. And when we hear the angels, they don't give us a name either. They give us titles to help us understand who Jesus is, who this little boy is, rather. Savior, Christ, the Lord, but still no name. We know that this child is the living God who has become human. And we know that this child is to be named Jesus. That's what the angel Gabriel told Joseph and Mary in a dream. But as for now and for the next seven days, the living God who has become a human person, knit together in Mary's womb for nine months, and now breathing the same air that we still breathe, he has no name. Just baby boy, Mary's son. Son of the Most High, Christ, Messiah, Savior, but no personal name. It almost seems insulting, if you think about it, that this Most High God who has come personally to this world is left without a name for a time. He who has established everything remains nameless. Just another baby born when babies were being born all over the world. He owns nothing doesn't seem like much of anything, just a helpless baby without even a name. A part of this is due to Jewish tradition and law. Boys would be named and circumcised on the eighth day after their birth. This is something that you can hear more about next Friday on New Year's Eve when we commemorate the naming and the circumcision of our Lord Jesus. But for now, the truth remains. The pre-existent, eternal Son of God has become flesh, and we have no name to give Him. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the fact that the Lord has no personal name yet is an act of grace. God the Son, for now, the nameless one in Bethlehem, has come to save and bring mercy on all those who have no name to give them a new name. All the nameless children that have died. All those who have denounced the name of their parents that their parents have given them. All those people who have names yet we have no idea who they are. People like the shepherds who visited Jesus while he lay in the manger. They too have no names mentioned in the Bible, yet their names are written in the Lamb's book of life. We should also add to this list, of course, all of you. Apart from Christ, the Savior and Lord, really you have no name, no name that God would recognize. Apart from Christ, the Savior and Lord, we are told in the Scriptures that not only are we enemies of God, but we are also dead to God because of sin. But through faith, trust in the eternal Son of God born at Bethlehem, we receive a new name, 
a name that cannot be erased or forgotten, a name that is above every other name, a name that was marked on your forehead when you were baptized, a name that even demons cower to. And what is that name? Well, you know what that name is. Jesus. This name, Jesus, is the name of the God who has become man. No one has ever forgotten that name, even though some have tried. The Sanhedrin in Jerusalem, Herod the Great, Herod Antipas, Pontius Pilate, many other Roman governors, procurators, and Caesars, tyrants the world over have tried to erase that name because the name of Jesus from the historical records by burning Bibles, destroying churches, and persecuting Christians. Philosophers and historians have tried to ignore and shrug aside all the historical data that undeniably supports that this man, Jesus, a man who also claimed to be God in human skin and bone, because he is the God who has become man with skin, bone, flesh, muscle, blood, and veins. This recounting of the birth of Jesus this name of Jesus, a name that even the angels longed to see, is the very name this world needs to be reminded of year after year after year. The God without a name received a name, and what a name it is. Again, I ask you the riddle from old Aguar of Proverbs chapter 30. Who has ascended and come down? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has gathered up the waters like a garment? Who has established the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? Surely you know. And surely you do know. Our Sunday school children know that name. Jesus. Jesus is the name of the divine Son of God. Jesus is the name of the baby born to Mary, Son of the Most High God. Jesus is the name above all names, the name that carries in its salvation, life, and the incredible promise of union with the one true God for sinners like you and me. God has given you access to that name that you would know his heart and receive his promised mercy. Don't let the name of Jesus be an unknown name in your home, a name unknown to children, to family members. Don't let the name of Jesus be unknown or forgotten in your mind, in your heart, for that is precisely what Jesus wants to transform and make new for his glory. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Today, Christ is born. Today, the Savior has appeared. Today, angels sing on earth. Our angels exult. Today, the righteous rejoice and sing.
Today Christ is born. Today the Savior has appeared. Today the righteous rejoice and sing. Glory to God in the highest. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Holy Church, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. For all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. For our president, for all public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins, for I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord.
The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you now and forever.